you know, for every one neuron you've got, it's got between 1,000 and 10,000 connections. So, you know, 100 neurons, you've got, boom, instantly 100,000 to a million connections. And the even more astounding bit is that each of those kinds of connections can act differently. You know, the metaphor of this kind of wiring up of the brain um, in some ways obscures how even more complex it is than, than that. We know a lot about the molecules in the body and what they do. We know a lot about the organs. We know a lot about the tissues. We know a huge amount about the cells, but we don't know how they're all put together from molecule to organism. And this is a huge missing piece. Something like 95% of our genes are expressed in the brain. And no one can say that any one of those are unimportant to the function of the brain. So we're not going to have a deep mechanistic understanding of brain function until we have a fairly deep understanding of the components. Array tomography is a method for very, very high resolution imaging. And what makes it different from many other kinds of microscopy is that not only can you look at very high resolution at biological structures, but you can identify many different molecules. First, we're trying to understand what are the different types of neurons that exist in the brain, and we're trying to understand how those different types of neurons are connected to one another. And so array tomography is a method by which we're able to reconstruct at a really high resolution individual synapses in the brain and look at their molecular composition in 10, 20, or, or 30 different colors that represent different proteins that do different jobs in the brain. Up until now, we've achieved beautiful, revealing views of very small pieces of mouse and human cortex. But to fulfill the potential that I see in array tomography today, we have to enlarge those volumes so that they're big enough to include complete circuit modules of the brain. So we begin with a piece of tissue and we will vitrify it. And what that means is that we will freeze all of the molecules exactly in place so that we can look at them later. We have a machine that puts about 2,000 atmospheres of pressure on a small sample and instantly immobilizes all of the molecules. The sample then stays in liquid nitrogen, which is at minus 196 degrees, and it's preserved there indefinitely. The brain in its living state is mostly water. Linnea has to get all the water out of the tissue and replace it with plastic monomers. So to give the brain that kind of mechanical stability, they need to take the brain and embed it in a plastic resin. Sort of like an insect in amber. We have a piece of brain tissue that is completely surrounded by plastic. We then cut them with a diamond knife, very thin. So we have a very, very in-depth look on each of these slices. We collect them in a way that they form a kind of ribbon or an array, which is where the array from array tomography comes from. So you have this set of sections that are kind of laid out like frames on a film tape. And that's what the sections are like here on this optical cover slip. And then we apply a, a set of what are called immunohistochemical stains. Basically, they're antibodies. So one antibody will recognize this molecule, a different antibody will recognize a different molecule that we're interested in. So we stain those sections, and then we take them to our fluorescence microscope, and we take pictures of each of the sections. And in fact, we take multiple pictures of each of the sections. And then in the computer, we take all those images and we reassemble it into a volume. And when this is all imaged, we will have a very, very high resolution detailed picture of the tissue and all of the molecules that we've been able to find, and that can be stacked back together. And we then have a reconstructed image where we're able to look at the synapses, we're able to look at the cells, the dendrites, the axons, and see what they're made of and how they're related to each other. So I work in particular on trying to design this next generation array tomography microscope that's able to, able to take pictures of these ultra thin sections at a much higher rate. What was state of the art five years ago took pictures at about 
900 pictures an hour. It took about 16 seconds for even a semi-automated microscope to focus, take the pictures in four different colors, and move on. The microscope that we've constructed here at the Allen Institute should be able to take pictures at about 10,000 images an hour. So it's a factor of 100 times or so faster than, than what was state-of-the-art five years ago. I think the beauty in array tomography is not so much in the array tomography, it's in the brain itself. And of course, you know, we tend to think that, you know, nature is beautiful, the starry, the starry sky is beautiful. So, you know, maybe we shouldn't be too surprised that the nature of the insides of our brain is beautiful. I can't do the, the kind of tissue prep and chemistry that Linnea and her team can, can do. I can't do the sectioning like the way that, that she can't, but I can build a microscope, I can, I can, I can program, I can make this automated, uh, automated procedure and, and help put the sections back together again. And so without having each member of the team there to, to do their specific and, and very different process, it, 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 doesn't, it, it can't work at the, at the level that we want to do it uh, here at the Institute. When you do microscopy, I think regardless of how the experiments are going, every day is an opportunity to have done something a little bit better and to have a picture to show for it. And there are often moments of surprise where you see something in the microscope that is unusual and you realize that no one else has ever seen it either. You see a lot of things that you learned in school don't exist. Um, but there it is, you took a picture of it.